Now, don't rely on this projected image because number one, it isn't very clear. So be sure you get your slide on the scope in focus. Slide 96 with the 10 inch objective lens. And again, your image will be better than this one. I can use this to point out things to you that you can see on your slide. All right, this is a cross section of a leaf. Here's one of those uh, magnolia leaves, like you have in your pan. And what I did was I cut it in half to show you what you're going to be looking at. You're not looking at this surface or this one, but you're looking at this surface, the cut edge of the leaf. That's why we have to use the microscope to see it. And when we look at that cross-section of the leaf, you can see that there's different kinds of tissue. Would you agree this doesn't look like this? This doesn't look like this, etc. Uh, I think I'm going to get this sketch out of your way. of that whole leaf. Now, on page 119 of your lab manual, 119, so it's about 13 pages after the one you were on, is a diagram of that leaf cross-section. A couple of the structures have been labeled, but there are some that are missing, and as it turns out, those are included in the ones you need to know. So, here's a layer of cells. What is that layer of cells called on this plant organ? That's epidermis. And Yes, it is the upper epidermis. In a moment, I'm going to show you how you can always know if it's the upper or lower epidermis. Because this layer of cells right here is also epidermis, but it's on the ventral surface of the leaf. So on your diagram, number one is the upper epidermis, and number four is the lower epidermis. Now something I want to call to your attention about the cells of the epidermis. Are they pigmented? No. no. So if they're not pigmented, they don't have any chlorophyll, are they photosynthetic? No. no. That means that the cells somewhere between here and here are the ones that undergo photosynthesis. Now do you see why the epidermis cells have to be transparent? So that light can pass through the epidermis to reach the cells that are photosynthetic. <clears throat> All right, low, upper and lower epidermis. Now, this uh, projection system, by the way, if Mrs. Hughes hadn't told you, work is literally in progress to try to correct the poor resolution that we have getting from this scope to that camera to on this screen. Um, even the manufacturer of the camera doesn't know why we're not getting good resolution. But they're working on it. But it's kind of hazy in this projected image, but on top of the epidermis is a thin molecular layer called what? The cuticle. Now this cuticle is transparent also so that light can penetrate it. But if it's molecular, is it alive? No. no. 
And since it's molecular, that means the molecules that make up that layer came from cells of this organ. And literally, it's the epidermis cells that secrete the cuticle. Now, what's the cuticle for? It's not just decoration. It's very important. Hold water. It's a wax-like molecular layer, I guess I'll call it, that inhibits the loss of water from the leaf. As you know, most leaves are very thin, except examples that aren't would be like those succulent leaves. But those thin leaves would lose water very rapidly if they didn't have this protective covering on the dorsal surface of them, called the cuticle. All right. Now, the tissue under the epidermis, and this is tissue, you can see the nuclei of those cells. These cells are called the palisade mesophyll cells. All of that? The one that looks all like of them. all of it? All the way from here as far as you can see under the epidermis. But that top like section kind of thing. Yes. Okay. And if you'll look at your slide, you'll see that these cells are cylindrical. They're not square, they're not round, they're cylindrical. And they contain chlorophyll, so these are cells which are photosynthetic. So if you were wondering, well, where does photosynthesis happen in the leaf? These are the cells where that takes place. <coughs> Now, similar to those are these cells. All of them from like, oh, about right here down to the epidermis. The whole length of the leaf. And they are called spongy mesophyll because these cells are not cylindrical. They don't occupy as much space and therefore there are many empty spaces for gas exchange in between the cells of this spongy mesophyll layer and what gases would be involved in that exchange process. CO2 and oxygen. Now, it's just the opposite of what happens in our bodies. The plant's got to take up CO2, so this is where the CO2 would end up before the cells absorb it, and the cells are producing oxygen. Now, yes sir? So the thick part at the top is where the actual photosynthesis goes on, that's the actual top of space. No sir, the these uh, spongy mesophyll cells are also photosynthetic. It's just there are not as many of them. Is that what you were asking about? Yes sir. Okay. Um, so, I think right in this area you can clearly see the difference between the palisade mesophyll cells. The cells are just packed together like toothpicks in a box. But in the spongy mesophyll region, there's very few cells, relatively speaking, and lots of air spaces. All right. The uh, next thing that I need to point out to you is how do you tell the lower epidermis from the upper epidermis? There's two ways. One way is the upper epidermis has the cuticle on it, but the other way you would know is that in the lower epidermis, and I don't see one here, I'll have to move the slide. You can't see the point of it. That's right. And I'm trying to get this area right here in focus. And that's the best it's going to get. There are two cells there, right close to each other. I know you'll be able to see it on your slide. That's not the only place where these two cells are located. But these two cells are called guard cells.
and the opening between the two cells is called the stomate. Now you're going to see these guard cells and the stomate much more clearly on the next slide we look at, but my point about your knowing that it's, that it's uh, on this surface is that the stomates are only on the ventral surface of the leaf, therefore they're only located in the lower epidermis. So if you see stomates, I don't care if, you know, if Mrs. Hughes is unscrupulous and turns the specimen upside down on the slide, if you see stomates in the epidermis, which, which part of the epidermis are you looking at? Lower. The lower epidermis. Okay. So yes, the guard cells kind of like, they look like they're open, like open I don't know, I can find someone. Like yes, they're in, it depends on the condition of the, of the leaf when they, when they uh, fixed it on the slide. But there may literally be an opening between those two guard cells. What is um, are the mesophyll going to be on the same side every time that it is switched? They do not switch around. The palisade mesophyll is always closest to the upper epidermis, always, and that's that's a good thing to be looking for. What are some constants that'll help me remember where this is? And that's one of them. So in this slide, the palisades on top, the sponges on bottom. Yes, sir. All right, now please put slide number nine seven on your scope. Nine seven. to go to the 40x at the edge of the leaf, now we're looking at which surface? The ventral surface. And embedded in the tissue of the, uh, of the epidermal tissue on the ventral surface are going to be these specialized cells, and here's one, and there's the other, called guard cells. To remember the guard cells, I think of them like the punctuation mark we call parentheses. They're slightly curved, and the uh, con convex side is to the outside, the concave side is inside. So when these two cells are rigid because of turgor pressure, then there's going to be a gap between the cells. That gap is the stomate. And you should think of those stomates like the nostrils of your nose. This is the opening where gas exchange begins, right? Leading to your respiratory system. And conversely, when those uh, guard cells are flaccid or flabby, then the opening is closed. Are all kind of like when someone would pinch their nostrils together. So are all those cells guard cells or just the special No, no, just, 
I only see two guard cells okay. right here and here. But then, I, this is out of focus, right. but every stomate is surrounded by two guard cells. But these are just epithelial cells. Okay. So, I guess on that one special one, which part specifically is the guard? And then the stomate, that's what I'm getting. The guard cell, think of it like the punctuation mark, half of a, a pair of parentheses. Okay. All right, there's even the nucleus, and there's the nucleus. All right, so two guard cells surround oh, the opening okay. called the stomate. And the stomates are critical for gas exchange. That concludes the material you need to know about the leaf. I want to encourage you, though, to look at every leaf specimen in the pan, determine the leaf type, the venation, and the leaf arrangement. The more times you practice that, the more it will become natural for you to just look at the leaf on the test and know this is a simple leaf or this is a pinnately compound leaf. Yes, ma'am. On here, this is like art. What we need to know? What about the bundle sheet cells? Oh.